Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to a new League of Legends video. So it seems like Aatrox's reveal page is finally out. It just came out and my goodness, look at this artwork. It looks absolutely amazing. So for this video, I'll be going over this whole page. I'll be reading stuff with you guys. I'll, you know, we'll look at the abilities together, see what they do exactly. I'll give you my thoughts on them. You know, maybe some ways you can use the abilities together, synergies and all that stuff. So if you guys are hyped for this Aatrox reveal, make sure to hit the like button on the video to show your, I guess, support or hype or whatever. And also, of course, make sure to subscribe if you haven't because I will be releasing PBE gameplays of this guy as he goes on the PBE server. So with all that being said and done, boys and girls, let's jump right into it. So what do we have here? Aatrox, the Darken Blade. If you don't know what a Darken is, it's essentially these like really weird kind of uh, creatures that are like weapons. They're pretty much weapons. Like, you know, like the Varus Bow, for instance, that take over like a host and they're like really evil and same with like, uh, not Kane. Kane, yeah. I was thinking of Kanye. I don't know why. Kane. Anyway, a fallen god warrior who once threatened to destroy Rune Terra. <clears throat> Aatrox and his kin were bound to ancient weapons and imprisoned for centuries, right? Because Aatrox is, of course, a Darken. That age is over. I mean, that, that, that can also imply that there's other Darken champions coming out as well. Maybe soon, maybe the next few champions, I don't know. Now with the stolen flesh warped in, in brutal approximation of his previous form, the Darken Blade seeks an apocalyptic and long overdue vengeance. Total obliteration. Okay, all right, boys and girls, let's go. All right, passive, Deathbringer Stance. Oh, yes, yeah, Stance is interesting. Aatrox's next basic attack has increased range and deals a percentage of the target's maximum health as damage. Okay, so max HP damage, of course. I expect no less of bruisers. This attack also significantly reduces all healing and shielding on the target for a few seconds. Okay, that's actually really powerful. So he's like the counter to all those like healing and shielding supports, all the quote-unquote eagle supports everyone says. Deathbringer's stance cooldown is slightly reduced whenever Aatrox casts the spell or when he lands the edge of the darkened blade, which I'm assuming is this Q. Yes, it is. Okay, let's see. What the fuck? That's not what I want at all. Well, that's what the heart is. Wow, wait, that's broken as hell. Wait, this dude, what the hell did you see that? The attack also gonna feel, wait, that's actually really, really OP. Okay, so that's what the heart is. So people were wondering what the heart was in the teaser. Essentially, it's a combination of Grievous Wounds and also Shield Debuffs. So it's like, a, it's like the, the new version of Grievous Wounds, like the, the OP version of Grievous Wounds. Okay, that's pretty cool stuff. The Darkened Blade, this is what I'm assuming is we saw him constantly using the teaser. Aatrox swings his Greatsword up to three times. Okay, so Riven's Q. Each cast increases in damage, impacts a unique area of effect, and can hit with the edge of the blade, a second smaller hitbox. Edge of the blade, hitting enemies at the, at the far end of the first two casts, and the center of the third briefly knocks them up and deals a more, or significantly more damage. It's not even more damage, just a lot more damage. Let's see what that looks like. Ooh. Izmir does Aatrox look hella skinny though. Wait, Izmir does he look so skinny? Wait, he looks so skinny. <laughs> anyway. Oh, well, that's a lot of damage. Hello? Oh my god. Wait, so okay, yeah, so it does more damage every single Q. The first Q just kind of starts it off and then just keeps doing more and more and more and more damage. And it does. I wish they showed a difference of how much more damage it does when you hit the outer versus when you hit the, like, the inner parts. Because they said that this part also does more damage too, I believe. That's a lot of damage, Ashton. All right, cool, cool, cool. Infernal Chain. So I'm assuming this is what the W was where he has like the thing that sucks him back in. That's what it looks like. Aatrox smashes the ground, damaging the first enemy he hits and briefly slowing them. If it's a champion or a large monster, okay, so maybe you can jungle him, they are chained to the impact area. If the chained enemy is still in the impact area after a few seconds, they are dragged to the center and take damage again. So that is the thing that we, we thought it was. From. Whew, wait, that's so good. Wait, that's actually broken because the thing that's really OP about that, and we also saw that on teaser, is that it has a lot of synergies with his Q ability, right? Because if you know they won't get away, like say they have no flash or they have no like Ezreal E or Lucian E or something like that, and you know they will pretty much guaranteed go right back to the center and get pulled back in, you just line up your Q, especially if you have your third Q, maybe if you have even your second Q, that's also pretty good. You line it up perfectly with the outer edge of it to do the extra damage to knock them up, and then you can follow it up with your other abilities as well. So that's actually pretty powerful stuff. Um, really, really good synergy between these two abilities for sure. Um, okay, let's go. I wonder what the cooldown on this is, though. I'm really curious what the cooldown on this is. Anyways. 
Umbral Dash, passive. Aatrox heals for a portion of the damage he deals. Okay, so that's about the same as his current, uh, current part of his W where he like pretty much heals on hits. Uh, Aatrox, active effect. Aatrox dashes, increasing his attack damage for a few seconds. Umbral Dash can store up to two charges and can be used simultaneously with the Darkened Blade. Oh, wait, that's really cool, actually. Wait, let's see this. This is, that's, that's, wait, that's really cool. Hold on. I like that synergy with the Q. Okay, that dash is way, wait, that's so small. <laughs> wait, that's the tiniest dash ever. Okay. So essentially it's Kane's passive. Red Kane's passive, it seems like. Wait, that's it? Wait, did, did they use... Wait, what? Wait, why won't they show us using his uh, E and uh, Q and E together? What the hell? Come on. Come on, Rito. Who makes these videos, bro? Where's I want to see the E and the Q used together. Why They don't show that, do they? No, they don't show that. What? Man. That's pretty lame. Okay, anyways. Let's see what else we have. The World Ender. This is his ultimate. This is, I'm assuming, similar to his current ultimate. Aatrox unleashes his full might, becoming monstrous in size and taking flight on massive wings. As he transforms, Aatrox fears the nearby enemy or minions and briefly increases his movement speed. This bonus is reactivated when out of combat. Okay, only minions though. Keep that in mind. Only minions. I'm not sure. I wonder why that is. Why is it only minions, not champions as well? While transformed, Aatrox increases his overall damage. Uh, gains a blood well that stores health over world enders duration and reviving him if he takes lethal damage while in his true form. Oh, okay, so his old passive is essentially combined into his ultimate. So you can't revive randomly, you can only revive when you are in your ultimate form. Okay, makes sense, makes sense. Let's see. Woo! Damn, so you can see his bar slowly filling up. Please don't tell me they just stand there the whole time. Please don't tell me they stand there the whole time. Please don't tell me they stand there the whole time. Please don't tell me they stand there. They stand there the whole time. They stand there the whole time. Use abilities. I want to see how it looks like in that form. Oh my god. Who makes these videos? So, the, 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 man, yo, honestly, go in the ultimate form and use a Q. Use a Q. You know, just 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 to see how it looks. Because, like, I mean, even if, even if it looks the same, you know, you should, we want to see how it looks, man. Um, but yeah, so all in all, I mean, okay, that's, that's some pretty cool stuff. So he just becomes a lot stronger. He just does more damage. He only fears minions. I still don't know why it's only minions. It would make sense if it was monsters as well, maybe. Um, and maybe champions as well. Maybe for like a, a shorter duration for champions. That'd be pretty cool too. Um, so it seems like what you can do is... I'm not sure how much more damage it actually adds, obviously. That's really important to know, right? But you can probably just proc this, proc this first. You can E, proc this, fear the minions away so they won't attack you, I guess, in the lane, for instance. If you're fighting, you know, they'll have less minion damage on you, which I guess is important. So E and ult. Use the W and then just start spamming away your Q ability. Obviously with an auto attack first to proc this because it does a lot of damage and it's maximum health. So you don't have to use this early. You can use this whenever because it's not current health, it's maximum health. So it's always useful, which is uh, really, really important. And it's obviously really good for top laners. And uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool stuff, man. Let's, let's see how let's see how he plays. Aatrox is an infernal warlord who cleaves earth and bone to massacre entire armies. Raise uh, the battlefield with a darkened blade. The landing precise hits with the edge to utterly decimate your opponents. Aatrox brings more ruin with the blade than basic attacks. Focus on cooldown reduction to unleash a constant onslaught. Cooldown reduction, okay. As enemies learn to dodge, maybe maybe Death's Dance actually could be spicy on him. Anyway, as enemies learn to dodge, binding them with, in place with your uh, E ability or your W ability uh, for a guaranteed guillotine or outplay their evasion with umbral. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, you're gonna you're not gonna be outplaying a whole lot with this. Like this, that's the smallest dash I've ever seen in my life. Um, where was I? Um, or I'll play their evasion with Umbral Dash as you wield the Darkened Blade. Umbral, Umbral Dash's passive turns bloody teamfights into fonts of health. Wait, what? Oh, right, because that's the passive that heals. Um, keep your alive for as long as you can, blah, blah, blah. Allies who shield and sustain him for more swings of the Darkened Blade will be rewarded with a frontline juggernaut who can deal as much damage as he... Blah, blah, blah. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, okay, whatever, who cares? Something interesting. Let's see how this looks, though. I'm gonna see this. So what do we have? What do we have here? So he's chilling in lane, level 9. Against the top lane Orianna. Alright, well, I mean, that Orianna is already kind of griefing. Let's see what he does with it. So he goes in with the Q, dashes in. Wait, see, was that combination with his E? Wait, hold on. Was that with his E or. He... Yeah, that was with his E. So he E forward with the Q, uses W, kind of misses the Q, but he did land the inner part of it. Did... Wow, wait a minute. That third. Wait, that did so much damage. Yeah, look how much damage the inner part did, right? So let's take a look. So he pulls her in, right? Not a lot of damage at all. Like the inner part of the Q, very, very, very little damage. But then he uses the E with the Q. Boom, look at that. That's a lot more damage. I like compare the damage right there. Just compare. That's the damage of before, and that's the damage now. Look at that. That's a lot more. 
So it seems like landing it on the outer or like the, like the thicker part or whatever is really important. So he uses his W. Wait, does that still pull him in? No, it didn't. So we can also do actually, you can use your Q to keep them. Actually, I keep watching. You probably want to see this. Let's just watch it first. Wait, he's what? He walks in that? Wait, he can walk where he revives? Okay. Oh. Oh. Wait, you can wait. Oh, wait, what? Wait, that Q seems so broken. Hello? Wait, that Q seems so broken. Okay, so I want to go over something very quickly here. Um, Here. So he uses the thing, right? It doesn't pull them in. But what you can do is you can actually use the Q to knock them up and force them to get to stay within it. Unfortunately, he seems like he just barely got out, which kind of sucks, but... Oh my god, look at that damage with that, that Q. That third Q, if you hit him in the circle, like in the center, combine him with the E bolt, he makes it hard to dodge, actually. That's a lot of damage, and it briefly knocks them up, so it's a displacement, which I guess Yasuo, for instance, can work off of. The biggest thing is, of course, he can revive, or he can move while he's reviving. Yikes, that's that's pretty insane. That's that's pretty damn ridiculous, but either way, guys, there you have it. Wait, let's see the splash rush really quickly. Oof. Wait, it's the same. Wait, it's literally the same. Yikes, it's the same. They didn't change it. But anyway, guys, that's that's it for this video. I mean, there you have it. Aatrox rework is finally here. I'll have a gameplay video of him on the PPE server when he's finally out there. I'll try to do various gameplays, show you guys different build paths and all that stuff. Playing, you know, top lane, mid lane, and all that stuff as well. But either way, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button, especially if you're hyped for Aatrox. And I will see you for the next video as well. Peace, peace, peace.